Hi everybody, welcome back to another free tutorial Friday. Um, I decided this week what I'm going to do is talk about uh, design. So this is, um, I'll just get right into it, this is a page from How to Draw when I and I explained a little design project where the goal was to create a uh, little sci-fi hot rod and my intention in the design brief let's just write a few notes here, was to use the uh, active wheel by, let's see, not the hubless one, but um, we'll see it when I get to the model. Uh, but an active wheel here, sorry, here and here from uh, Michelin. So if you look that up, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's uh, active wheel. And what that does is it puts the suspension, uh, it puts suspension and the drive motor and the steering and the braking all inside the hub. So it means that the chassis can be rigid and that's what I wanted to explore on this little sci-fi, you know, model and design. So the idea was to use, and then this engine here, the motor, is not really an internal combustion engine, it's actually um, a power generator. So the idea is to keep the uh, silhouette of a traditional looking hot rod um, so that when at first glance you immediately recognize that it's got some you know hot rod influence and that's primarily done by keeping that that very strong silhouette right that classic like 1932 Ford right deuce kind of look and then um, introduce different form language, which that's kind of faceting, which is not common of the day, and a different power source, a different chassis uh, being driven by a different technology, both front and back um, the same. So I'm playing up that Michelin active wheel. And so this was the basic rendering. So I did a little sketch in my sketchbook, which was up here at the top, that guy, and then uh, redrew it here and this was traditional media, a uh, vellum sketch with chalk marker, that sort of thing. Then I went into uh, Photoshop, so that's the Photoshop. And then this you've seen this one before, because this is another one of my DVDs in Photoshop where I did the weathering and colorized this guy. So um, you can go check that out. On It's uh, coloring, uh, I think it's color and weathering. Uh, so that's another one of the free tutorial Fridays from a couple, few months ago. So this is what I had. This page, this is a page in the How to Draw book. Uh, of course, there's text over here. Um, but anyway, it's just a little two-page summary of that quick design project. This is as far as it was taken, um, which was just a side view. I don't even know what the rear view looks like. Uh, you can't really see it there and really nowhere else. And it's not hubless in this case, so these aren't really relevant anymore. Uh, same here, same here. So there's really not a lot to go on. That's basically it, just this guy right here. So let me show you where we're at now so let's close this one so now we're here and um, this model started let's see there's a previous model to this let me jump over to moto which is here and this model was done by rob baldwin based on the um, side view that i just showed you which was kind of this kind of a perspective Right, it was pretty similar to something like that um, in our in that orange rendering, and so there wasn't a lot he could pull out of here. Right, he had you know this basic silhouette of the power source, the overall proportion, but no information about the back, no information about the front, and really nothing about the top view and how these elements from the chassis were supposed to connect over. Um, he knew that it was using that hubless active wheel, not hubless, sorry. Uh, in-hub, suspension, braking, power, steering, all that happening inside there. So this is a pretty good first cut, I think. Um, and it definitely you know, sort of captured the proportions. But it needed to be uh, refined. And so uh, Rob was uh, nice enough to hand it off to me. And then I took it the next step, which I'll show you now inside Photoshop. Okay, and this was my first cut at refining that model. So let's talk a little bit about what I did and why. And that's basically this week's talk is going to be about design and how I'm refining this and the decisions I'm making 
along the way and why I'm doing that. Um, first, the uh, this needed to have a bit more rake to it, so that the front cowl there, that front visor, and the silhouette needed to come down a bit, give it a bit more attitude so that this was a taper. So I wanted that to taper just a small amount. Then most of the time is spent trying to work out things like the big key lines, like this is obviously the big feature line down the side body. And then of course this where it kicks back up and in. And then there's this element, which is also important. And so trying to balance all of those. And so usually when I start working, I didn't have to model this from scratch, fortunately, but I took Rob's model and started tweaking it. And so that was much faster for me. Um, to start to push and pull on vertices and surfaces. And so most of my time is spent initially just in this sort of white model phase, like it's primer gray, and spent trying to figure out the overall proportion. So I um, stretched the wheelbase a little bit, uh, made the wheels and tires a little bit narrower, and also a little bit smaller. Actually, you know what, I take it back. I don't think I changed diameter at all on the wheels, but I did make them a little narrower and started to figure out, okay, just what is gonna to have to happen up there to connect. Um, and it's just roughed in. So this is usually how it starts, big block shapes, working out overall proportion and stance before the next step. So I got, basically got it working in that view. Okay, and then switch to another view. So here you can see the dilemma with this vehicle in top view, if we jump back over to Moto, and I'll take a look at the top view. In my top view from the rendering, I always imagine that this was just a blade here, a thin, thin blade. So I have this big triangle. Well, that presents a bit of a problem when you get into a front view because you're left with all of this open space here, right? Well, what's gonna go in there? And it needs some of that. It needs something to go in there to give it a little bit more balance. Otherwise, you end up with this huge triangle. It's, you know, there's nothing at the front and it's really fat back in here, but you need the width, right? Because you've got to fit your people in there. All right, and there's some dude's shoulders and there's his feet, that sort of thing, and there's the steering wheel. So, you know, to package, you need that width. And this thing's actually pretty wide already. Um, and so this is a this is a tough, it's probably the toughest thing that in top view, trying to balance that blade um, in top view with this thin, thin line, and then getting all the way back out to the, grab the wheels and attach them to the chassis. Um, so I came up with the idea of doing these sort of overly complex brackets to hold the light. And because this doesn't move, this is, there's no suspension in this, this just has to go out because all the suspension, right, the spring is inside the hub, that moves up and down. That means I could just attach it rigidly through here. So the whole idea of using these wheels and uh, mechanism is that it allows for a more interesting rigid structure at the front. And so I came up with this thing. So these are kind of like driving lights and turn signals. And then here's a primary uh, headlight right here and here. And at this point, because I have this big triangle element in top view, now the triangle starting to become the dominant shape um, that I like to play up. So that's why I went with these triangular lenses. They're rounded off a bit, but they're kind of triangles. And so I'm trying to play up these odd angles to each other. So this has an angle like this and an angle like that. And so that was the first cut. And you're going to see how they evolve and change when we go forward. And then I had this element, right? And that was the first block in again. Just trying to find overall proportion stance just to the elements, the design elements now. I also took and popped out a little element to this generator, um, this power source. Let's call, just call it the power source. I don't know what it is. It's just a sci-fi something or other, but it's not internal combustion as we know it. It's something else to provide the electricity for the motors, right, that are sitting in here somewhere, um, which I'll have to package later as the design evolves. So let's go to the next step. And you can also see there's a bunch of surfacing problems, right? I've got to figure out what's the section going to do through there to hold the reflection. All that stuff has to be worked out. You can see it's a bit hollow. And and I'm only going to do a poly model on this. Um, I'm not doing a sub deed model. <clears throat> so here's the first cut at trying to go to the next level. So you can see what I've done is I pulled the headlights. Headlights used to be down in here. 
somewhere, sort of narrow, and that sort of gave the face of it, it was too beady-eyed. Um, so I moved those up and also out. So now there's the new position up m closer, you know, to the sort of typical height of a normal car, which is, is usually up here around the front tire. And then I, these were too dominant and again too narrow, the little turn signal thing. So I stretched those out and I put on these little turn signal whiskers, right? Or let's call it the handlebar mustache of uh, side markers. And then I just mirrored this plane right here in an attempt to give the nose more mass, right? It was just, it, it needed a little bit of width, but I, I really am still trying to get that blade to work. Um, I didn't want to lose that blade uh, at the front. And, I, you know, I'm still struggling with it, even in the current version, but it's starting to work. I do have to figure out what I'm going to do with that. I'm not crazy about the way that this terminates at the bottom. Um, and this still needs to be worked out, the engineering. This is some sort of air intake there to cool all the components inside the hub. And this is, of course, the attachment to the chassis. So those are the big issues. Um, I did also, we don't see it the other view, but um, there's the power source for the lights. The intent is that it's going to run through these little triangle rods. And the concept is this is sort of suspended. So imagine this is a tension member here tying back to the firewall and then it's sort of visually pulling the light back and then even though these are rigid you don't really need this but visually I think it's kind of fun and it also again adds a detail up into this empty area so there's three little tension cables there and then in the middle of those should be you know like a power cable or something or maybe that's a detail I still have yet to add uh, you can also see I started detailing a little bit with some tire tread I spent a little time on the wheels kill this one. Um, this is the view. I'm just using a procedural shader here in Moto. Um, what I mean by that, there's no UVs at all on this model. There's, um, well, I can take it back. There are some UVs for the tires um, and the tread, but that's it. Um, all the rest is just procedural. So this is just a worn edges procedural material, uh, but it gets close enough. And you can imagine with a Photoshop paint over, it'd be pretty easy to go back in and nick this up like that video I did before. And with a paint over you could get really close so this is this would be a nice base model to paint over the top of um, I also try to get the same sort of color palette as the rendering a little bit and um, so I'm playing now with materials a little more it is then this is just blocked out and made up um, and started adding a little uh, side marker at the back of course still have to resolve just what is happening at the back end but there's the blade. I always like that prominent center line to show up and hold that sort of hot rod silhouette comes from that. And then again, haven't addressed this yet, but let's go and check out. And the other thing I liked, um, which also the uh, rendering had, the sketches, was that the front wheels, the front versus the back, were similar, right? And that they were circles and a lot of vent holes and this is you know circle and a lot of vent holes and then ones around the perimeter here i like that they somehow relate with color and material but they're actually quite different so i'm trying to retain that as i work forward okay again these are straight out of moto um, untouched yet in photoshop so let's see where this stage is at okay i've um, now played with the materials with a little bit of worn edges also on this dark surfaces um, I poked up, there's now some intakes that poke up through the hood for the engine or the, the power source. And um, those weren't on the rendering, so that's now something I've added. I added this uh, rear spoiler. I don't remember if it was in the uh, rendering or not. No, it wasn't. There was a little rear, there was a little rear spoiler there. Um, and I think, oh, I left out the dimples. I'm just going to leave those. So the overall idea here is that I have this faceted form language, and I'm trying to exploit that, right, and play that up. And the challenge in the model is, for instance, trying to get a flat window form through here, a flat section, right? Then how do these, this also has to be flat if this is flat through here. So if I don't want distortion in my window, then I have to model this flat around it and then figure out how to blend out to this brake line out here. And so a lot of the time in the model is spent doing those kinds of transitions. 
but you can see the highlights are starting to run where they did in the rendering it's actually getting pretty close um, and now I'm going to go beyond what the rendering was and start to change the design in 3d here's the rear view so it's the first time we see the rear view the concept at the back um, is that uh, this is some, supposed to be some sci-fi hot rod, right? Somewhere in the future. I'm saying 2032, 100 years after the original inspiration. And um, so I'm trying to put in some form language that feels a little bit, you know, sci-fi, a little otherworldly. And although now you can see this very much on contemporary supercars and things like Lamborghinis, of course, they do a nice job of that. Um, so I wanted some iconic elements at the back, of course, right? So we side marker, tail lights, um, exhaust. I don't know what sort of power generator this is, but I'm assuming it's got some sort of, you know, heat that needs to come out the back, some sort of um, mechanism there. So these are all sort of classic iconic elements of cars, right? This is the transmission at the back, um, like the differential, and then some exhaust pipes. So I sort of wanted to keep that so it has an immediate car feel, even though it's being driven by an alternate power source. And um, this is a little F1 influence back here, a little aerodynamics. Um, so like a double diffuser, a couple of little vertical, you know, control surfaces back there as well. Not that they actually do anything, but visually they're fun. Um, and this is where I started to play with the graphic breakup of uh, what's going to be dark and what's going to be paint. So I like this sort of matte, dark matte surface, which is sort of classic of 70s muscle cars, um, to float all your details and taillights and elements in this matte finish back end. Um, you can see that that bump map isn't quite refined yet for the tires, um, but this is starting to work. I generally like that. I mean, this is always tough when you bend the nose away, right, in top view, there's nothing to see in the rear three quarter right because it's all hidden it's you know it's wrapping around in top view so the nose is out over there somewhere and you know that line wraps around like this so over here there's just nothing so what I did was that's the reason for all this you know this sort of overly complex headlight structure was to and then there's those little cables to provide a little visual interest in that open space because if you imagine it without that all right, if I just did a quick paint out here. Let's say we just get rid of that. Okay, and so that's what I'm looking at. Then you can see how sort of unsupported and, and disconnected the front wheel becomes from the vehicle. So the idea was to put something there that's functional, because I need a headlight still going to have darkness in the future and want to drive in it and so this is taking up that space and becoming the focal point in this kind of three-quarter view um, you can also see that I've added at this point a uh, door handle right here and then this is the door cut so it's almost this entire side uh, opens so that's what the door cut looks like and right now I just blocked in these rectangular taillights they're not working, you know, I hear really playing up the triangle and the triangle side marker. So right now, these these aren't working for me, um, but I'll come back to that in the next next rev. So those need to be refined at some point in the future. So let's see where it goes next. Okay, here I just switched the material from the worn surface to a shiny maroon. And in this view, um, you know, I got the, I'm setting up the materials now. Um, you know, so the headlights have some body paint on them. Then they're surrounded by this metallic structure. Uh, punched a hole in it here. This is still a little bit awkward, that corner. Let's see if I can find something to write with here that we can see on screen. You know, this shape doesn't quite work with this, so this taper is a bit awkward. So I need to probably revisit that still. Um, I kind of like how these, the, my mustache side markers, they mirror this center line, right? So they're just sort of offset from that surface. That's generally working. Still, I'm not crazy. Maybe some fasteners and things in here in the final version would look good because there's some blades 
that connect over. So maybe some bolt heads or something, flush finished. Of course, those aren't fun to model in a poly model, but they might look cool. Um, okay, so overall, generally working, I cleaned up the interior a little bit, uh, made it white, uh, added some blue glass. But the thing that wasn't working for me the most in this view was the width of the tire. So and I'm starting to see this now in a more finished sense. It looked like this was just a little bit too fat. Um, so it's just too wide here and here for the feel of this car. This feels too modern, more like supercar, right, proportions. And I wanted to get it back a little bit closer to an older um, classic hot rod that feels a little bit more nimble. Um, it would be a little bit scarier to drive around corners than something that looks like it has got monster grip. So I narrowed it up after this maroon version. And this one is still the wide one, but we can't really see it in this view. Um, so I go view by view, and that's why I do multiple views in Moto. And they render very, very quickly. And so you can just stack those up. And the, what I'm sharing with you now is kind of the way that I would look at this um, and decide what to do next. I do a render like this and I might throw some notes on it or I might just think about it and then jump right back to the model and start to refine the surfaces. And so in this case I went back made those narrower. At this point you see I've got quite a few details on the wheels. Um, those are basically going to stay the same going moving forward. Um, I kind of like how this little metallic thing's grabbing that. So at this point did I fix next? I was really into playing with materials for a while, so we're not going to see any big changes on the model for the next few images. But this is what I would do. I'd say, oh, is that curve just right on that scoop, or should it should it be positive, or should it be negative? What about the height proportion? Does that stick up enough? Should I pop it up more like a big supercharger intake sticking out of the hood? So maybe I'll go play with that in the model, refine that, run a couple more renders, evaluate it, have a look. This whole Basically, it needs a whole new power source. This is not, you know, holding up anymore as being visually that interesting. So I probably need to do a rebuild on that. So it's things like that. Um, and just make notes, things that are working and things that don't. There was, I know, a change in here with this shape didn't quite echo the other shape. And this cut I did on a previous model, it was a bit straighter. It wasn't working with, with this line, so I added a little bit more taper. So a lot of subtle things have happened. Um, at this point. Okay, this one um, was a big, let's see, let me check the image size on this. Is this the monster one? Yeah, this is the monster one. I actually just ran this last night. And I wanted to see all the details. So now I've got a, now I have a material problem in um, Moto. I've got a little texture issue here um, where it looks like my carbon fibers pinching and that's because I'm not using UVs. If I used UVs I could get away from having that issue but I'm too lazy to do UVs. I'm too impatient so I just don't. Um, so I probably just fix it up in Photoshop. That little crushed fabric how it's rendering. So this is the carbon fiber one. I actually ran it um, at 8,000 pixels overnight. It actually only took like 20 minutes but I don't know was it 40 minutes. Um, you can see now there's um, a lot more detail on the inside of the hub. We'll get there in the next view, I think. And I've detailed out the taillights in the, in the poly model. So I actually built um, a red plastic lens. And then inside, I put a lot of glowing polygons to give it that more photoreal look. If I was going to go really tight in this model, I've got to go clean up holes and add radiuses. Um, it's not a sub-D model. The wheels and tires are sub d And the body is just a straight poly model. Um, and we jump over to, to Moto, you'll see the, the resolution of it. It's quite low. So you've got a lot of, a lot of surfacing problems through here. Um, this is a difficult shape to transition out of this flat plane up to the nose because um, I introduced this little, this little break right here, and that tilts that surface away. And so holding the reflection, I have a big reflective light source above, a big polygon, and you can see it's all wobbly. Need some more radiuses down there. This is still awkward in that hole. This is generally holding up. I went in and I added a little translucency. Again, there's a piece of plastic there. Um, and again, I'm tweaking some graphics on my wheels and my tires. I've got a stripe with a graphic on it now to make it look more real. I've also added uh, just a straight planar projection. I've added a little pinstripe, also in classic hot rod style, a little, you know, what might be a hand-painted pinstripe 
down the side body, yellow to match the stripes on the tires. A lot of hot rods have that classic one accent color um, that matches throughout both the power source, you know, details, graphics, pinstripes, um, tire sidewalls, wheels. So I'm trying to get that working together, again, to give it that hot rod feel. This was a little test with some atmosphere, um, just for fun. So this is just a straight render test, and I'm adding more atmosphere at the front of the vehicle than at the back to give it a little bit more depth um, and make the rear stand out a bit more. This was a glossy black test instead of the carbon fiber. Um, just to see it in really classic hot rod style. One of the, the elements you see that I'm keeping, um, and I've gone back and forth on this and I might revisit it, is the fact that I'm really playing up circles here with the wheels, right? Multiple concentric circles, which is sort of really gives it a retro feel. Um, and then that, you know, put next to all these hard edged angular surfaces, I think is a nice, a nice mix, a nice blend. You see, I'm playing up the triangle with my hinges, the door hinges, the door handle, the side marker, right? Those little side markers there. Some of these elements trying to echo some of the body lines back into the power source. Um, so where I go back and forth is, and I might try a wheel at some point, it might be interesting to start to introduce, you know, some, uh, some large triangles into, right, into this wheel design, whether it's a three spoke or a five spoke, whatever that is, but it might be fun to, I'm um, sorry, that one went the wrong way. Um, might be fun to start to play with some triangles so it matches the form language of the body. I don't want to get away from the hot rod feel. So the balance will be, I don't think I probably have to worry about it, to be honest, because this is so strong, that element right there with the overall proportion and the exposed power source and a tapered front. I think it's always going to read as hot rod. Um, so I'm probably going to try and modernize these at some point just to see if it's um, a little more sci-fi pushing out and getting a little bit more visually challenging or interesting, let's say. Here's the rear view now. Um, here I've added a, uh, let's see, go full size. I've added a uh, detailed cover and I've attached that suspension member or the chassis member punches through a hole here, allows for the vertical movement of that wheel and tire, some venting, a cover over the motor that's just inside. There are some fasteners to cover to put the uh, cover onto that internal structure. Um, you also notice that when all these renderings, um, the wheels have like a one degree camber um, to them. I've added. So what I mean by that is typically the, the plane of the, the wheels here, and you'll notice that the plane of my wheel is just tilted over like that by one degree. Same at the back. It gives, it, it gives the vehicle a little bit of weight Makes it also feel a little bit a little bit sportier having that camber, right? Because you see that on race cars a lot. And so this is getting a little bit better. I, I added some some radiuses through here, right? Just to and also the big change at this point is the triangle tail light. So there I've gone to a triangle tail light, done a little more surfacing to get away from that rectangle, which I, I like much more. Okay, this was actually this was just from Facebook banner, so I tried it in matte black just a material change. And this is where I'm at today. Um, you can see I've got, and this is, I'm playing with a reflection color um, that's set to a gradient. And I remodeled just this morning, I remodeled this little element from the power source that sticks out, cleaning up some of the cut lines, um, cleaning up some radiuses. And oh, I've also added a little graphic to the center hub. Can't, there's another one in there, but it's got a little power source symbol on it, hinting back to the alternate power source of the vehicle. And there you can kind of see the fasteners. There's an air intake here to cool. There's the exhaust there. And this is housing over the motor. And let's look at the very last one. There it is in matte black. And that's kind of where I'm at. You see, I'm in the process of cleaning up some of these radiuses and cut lines. I've accidentally broken that surface, so I have to go back and repair that polygon there. Um, it needs a lot of cleanup. It basically just needs a rebuild. This is still, 
I would say a blockout model. I mean, it's a tight blockout at this point, but um, can definitely use more modeling time. And this last, very last thing let's do is just have a quick look at the model. So this was the uh, Rob's version, and then this was the revision of that. So you see the basic form is there, and it's just subtle. You know, look at the overall width of the rear wheelbase, the tires themselves, and the body form, right, keeping that blade up front. And this definitely has a ways to go, but this is where it's at. And I'd love to sort of remodel the whole thing uh, so I could do a subdivision a sub D version of this to really add the proper crown to the surfaces. Right now they're just big flat polygons. Um, and, but that's where it's at. I hope you found it interesting uh, to have me take you through the process and the way that I think about these things and how I try to evolve them um, from a sketch into 3D. And then what I do when I look at the renderings and how I look at them to go back in and make the next revision. And yeah, it's, it's getting there. So hope you enjoyed it and uh, tune in next week and see what's cooking in my studio. Oh, one last thing I forgot to mention. I did a uh, podcast uh, last week, on, actually while I was on my vacation with uh, Ash Thorpe for The Collective. So I will add a uh, link in the description area of this video and um, about an hour and 20 minutes, I think, and just general discussion about creativity and, and education. Spent a lot of time talking about education. So if you're into design and education and art and that sort of thing, uh, give it a listen. Have a great week.